What's up, good people? I'm Mark Holmes, and I am here at, with my son, my son, who I am very, very fortunate to be able to work with my son, my wife, and so forth. And some people think I'm crazy. Crazy Mark. I'm here at what's known as the Red Brick House. It's more than just a red brick house. It's 202 years old. And I want to tell a little bit of a story right now. I had never seen this house. Never heard of the Red Brick House or the Red Brick House Committee or anything like that. But I was doing a grant program where I was doing a presentation about saving homes um, and trying to build my business more with it. And I did my presentation and stuff and everybody thought it was a great presentation, but I didn't win the grant. But I met this guy, David, computer guy, and he said, you are the guy I've been looking for or that we've been waiting for. And he took me over here to this house in the dark that night from that event that ended about nine o'clock. And I fell in love with this place. And I've learned a lot about this place. This is a lot of work. 22 bags of cement that we've mixed up here to redo the foundation supporting the floor up underneath of it. We had to rip off the back of the kitchen here and rebuild it because it had literally rotted into nothing. We've got a new electric panel right here on the other side of this wall, a new meter base that come December 1st, the power company will be here to hook up new service. I got to dig a trench from the front of the property into here to get the water service on. And I got to spend a lot of money and a lot of time and bat breaking work on trying to save it. 
See, the city owned it, and they were going to bulldoze it over because they didn't want to go through the trouble of fixing it. There's a new Walmart grocery store that's across the street that they play music loud all the time at, but be that as it may. See, most people will ride by this place and look and say, man, that place is a piece of crap, man. They need to tear it down. But see, here's the thing. This place right here, I want you to go with me here for a second. When this place was built, probably my ancestors as slaves behind here made the bricks. See this? That is a 200 year old handmade brick. Made by slaves. Back there. See, the guy who wanted to build this, I can't remember his name right now, but he's buried in Stanton. His headstone is actually red bricks with a piece of granite on top of it. He was a Re Revolutionary War officer. He decided he wanted to build this as a school. This is one of the first masonry buildings in this part of, the, uh, of this city. And I want you to think about this. Because when this place was built, there was only 23 states in the Union. 23 states. There were no trains. Transportation was horse and wagon, and they were trying to build the CNO Canal from D.C. to Ohio, hand digging. After this was a school, the American Civil War came through. And in the last month, last month of the Civil War, General Sheridan with Armstrong Custer came from the West into the city of Waynesboro, chased Jubal, Jubal Early and his troops out of the city of Waynesboro. It only lasted like 45 minutes. And I wanna say, because don't, don't quote me on this because I may be wrong. One of the few people that were killed in this battle was the founder of the local Masons. Now, during the Civil War, I was told upstairs, they used it as a Civil War hospital. Worked on the soldiers. And when the soldiers died, now there were two houses that were over here on the other side of this house. But through those trees right there, cemetery built in 1798 some of those soldiers who were here when they died working on them were buried right there back to after the civil war in 1866 after the war was over they commissioned a new masonic lodge here in waynesboro 209, I think, Lodge 209. And Robert E. Lee gave permission for them to use his name. So the Lee Lodge, the Masons, they met right here. Oh, part of that closing month of the Civil War, the battle came right through here. Um, there's another, you remember what the name of the house is over there? There's a house that's actually a museum that's over here. Um, I forgot that it's a local, it, it's a museum and stuff. It was built like 10 years before that. But there weren't a lot of houses that were here. And so through the course of trying to find out more about this. I don't, I don't know if it's this house or the one that's down there. One of those two houses still has a cannonball. That's the one that's down by the river. Yeah, actually, I, I wanted to get that one. If you go down to South River, there's a, a, a house that's kind of abandoned that's down there. But there's a cannonball that was stuck into the side of the house from the Civil War. I don't know if somebody's ripped it out or not. My point being is, is this is our history. Good and bad. It's our history. You can try and shade it, you can try and hide it, you can try and make it look better, 
But the reality is, is what happened here and everywhere made us the people we are today. And if you don't know where you've come from, you don't know where you're going. Now, here's what's kind of crazy to me because, you know, I, I joke and say, I'm working like a slave on this. And maybe I shouldn't joke like that because probably actual slaves built this. But how cool is it that me, having all this history and everything else, that now, 202 years later, I own it and I'm trying to save it. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. But um, being down up underneath this house and working on the footings and seeing the flattened logs that they use for the foundation, I realize that 200 years of history of all of those people that lived here, or the kids that went to school here, the people who died here, people came here and partied, that I'm a link in that chain. That those same slaves that put these first bricks in here with their hard work, that I'm here putting them back in with them as well. And that's why I work on saving these old houses.